Hey everyone, welcome to the fine art of photo montage. I'm Richard Tushman. The following video is an excerpt from my intensive signature online course, which is a companion to this channel and is also titled The Fine Art of Photo Montage. And you can learn more about the full course from the link in the description. But this video is about what some people view as Photoshop's most intimidating tool. Let's have a look. Hey everyone. I have to say a little about the famous or infamous pen tool. If you're serious about Photoshop, and especially if you're serious about building convincing montages in Photoshop, you're going to want to become proficient at using the pen tool. The pen tool is one of the most powerful, but in my opinion, one of the least intuitive tools in Photoshop, at least until you get used to it. The pen tool excels at creating accurate, customizable silhouettes of any object or figure that consists primarily of curves and or smooth surfaces. Anytime you see a piece of merchandise silhouetted in an ad, chances are that the silhouette was created using the pen tool. What the pen tool allows you to do is to create an accurate editable vector path that you can then use to create an accurate editable selection or mask. I use it all the time for objects and figures. Now, it's not really good for objects or parts of objects with very irregular contours, such as hair or fur, but we'll get to how to tackle those challenges in future lessons. Now, when you click on the pen tool icon and you hold the mouse down, you'll see there are actually three options for the pen tool. There is the standard pen tool, then the freeform pen tool, and the curvature pen tool. I only use the first one, the standard pen tool which I find is much more precise than either the freeform pen tool or the curvature pen tool. So that's the one that I use and that's what I recommend. With the pen tool selected, a path is created by clicking with the mouse to define the two endpoints. You can create a straight path by simply clicking without dragging anywhere on your image. Now anytime you complete the path by coming back to the beginning and clicking on the original point, you create what's called a closed path. And generally speaking, we want all of our paths for silhouettes to be closed paths. Otherwise, it creates various problems with our silhouettes. Creating a curve is a little more complicated. First, you click, and then, without lifting the mouse button, you drag out a handle, or tangent, in the direction that the curve will go. The path is created by the next click, which creates the next point. So again, a path is created by connecting two end points. The length and direction of the handles, or tangents, defines the curve. And generally speaking, fewer points are better, and define smoother and more accurate curves. Now, How do you know where to place a point? Well, generally a point goes wherever the curve changes to a different curve, or straight path, or to a corner point. Okay, now let's try for a little bit more of a wholehearted attempt at demonstrating the pen tool. So I'm going to start here where the two halves meet. And I'm going to click and drag. Now I'm going to make this handle about a third the length of what I want this segment to be. Um, and then I'm going to come up to this top, uh, the top of the curve and click here. And then I'm going to pull out another handle to finish that curve. Now I'm going to actually come down here and click to make the next segment. And then again, drag out this handle to complete that curve. Now I know from experience that this handle is really too long for the next segment. But what I love about the pen tool is that you can very easily edit the path on the fly. So in, in order to make this handle shorter, I'm going to temporarily hold down the command key, which converts the cursor to the uh, direct selection arrow. And then I'm going to just drag this handle so it's a little bit shorter. And then I can come and, and uh, make the next segment uh, where this curve is going to um, change directions. And there you go. And then I'm going to come back down here to make the next one. And now here you can see again I still I need to edit this handle because it isn't quite long enough to make that curve. So I'm going to again hold down the command key, click and just drag it out a little bit more so that I make a more accurate path. 
Now here um, is a little bit of a problem because I need to actually make, this is a corner point, okay? Whereas these are, you can see these are all smooth points uh, because the curves continue. Here we need a corner point. So in order to do that, what I need to do is actually change the direction of this handle. And so for that, uh, instead of holding down the command key, I'm going to hold down the option key or the alt key. It changes to a little v and I'm going to convert this point from a smooth point to a corner point. So I'm going to click on this handle and drag it up. And so we get a nice V. And now I know when I come here, I'm going to have a nice corner point. Now you can see I still I have to adjust this handle again, but that's okay. And then I can continue with my path here. top now here again I'm going to have to change this to a corner point and I'm going to hold down the command key now and just adjust this curve and I can see I have to adjust this one too as I was saying what I really love about uh, the pen tool is how easily editable the paths are so when I'm in the direct selection tool, which I can again, I access by holding down the command key, I can click on any point and simply, you know, move it around if I need to, or again, you know, adjust the curves with the handles. And if I need to convert a point into from a smooth uh, curve to a corner point, I hold down the option key, hover over the point, and then just click on it. It's also very easy to add and delete points. Uh, while I'm in the pen tool to delete a point, I simply hover over the point while I'm in the pen tool, and then you get a little minus sign next to the uh, pen uh, little icon, and you cl just click on it and that will delete the point. And conversely, you can also add a point. So while I'm in the pen tool to add a point, I simply hover over anywhere along the path that I want to add a point and it's very easy to add points and again to take them off you simply click on it and take them off. Now you'll notice that if you switch to the paths palette your path will appear as a work path. I suggest that you save this as a regular path and give it a name I'll call this heart and that way you can save multiple paths, you know, in any document, which is often the case, you know, in a montage. And it's very easy to convert this path now into a selection by simply going to the bottom of the paths palette and clicking on this little dotted circle there. And now it's just a regular selection and we can treat it as any other selection. Now, this heart is obviously a very simple example for demonstration purposes. Most of the time, I'm silhouetting figures or more complex objects with the pen tool, resulting in more complex paths with many more points, but the principles are still the same. Now, if you're truly allergic to learning the pen tool, or you simply don't have the time it takes to cut a complex path, or a number of complex paths, there are any number of service bureaus around the world who will do a very nice job cutting your pen tool paths for a few dollars per figure or object. Just go to Google search, type in Photoshop Clipping Path Service, and you'll be presented with a plethora of options. That said, I still think it's a good idea to have the skill in your back pocket, so it's there when you need it. In the meantime, to paraphrase Yogi Berra, when you come to the fork in the path, take it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lesson. And there you have it. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and click like if you liked the video. And please follow us on Instagram and check out our deluxe intensive online course. Those links are in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching.